It has been a while since I've shared my journey around Kono on a bicycle, but it is time we go back to it. And to do so, we will end the series with Roseland Peninsula. Yes, there is still a lot more to visit, but the remaining regions will need to be explored on another trip, which hopefully I'll be able to do this year. So on today's video, we'll be covering the top places to visit in Roseland Peninsula, and on the following vlogs, we will be exploring in depth two of these places. So sit tight, as there are quite a lot of them. They will be presented in no particular order, and the first one will be Varian. What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Denny and I have been doing a cycle trip across Cornwall. And yes, you might call me crazy and I kind of am, but it has been an adventure, really. Nothing that I didn't quite expect it. But today, finally, we have a very, very, very good weather after the last three days that was very gloomy. Uh, drizzling a lot. Yeah, today I'm not on my bicycle, uh, surprisingly. Um, if you've watched the last vlog, then you know that yesterday basically was hectic. I had a puncture and it was dramatic and I cried. So if you do want to watch some drama, then make sure you check that video. Um, but today is a lot better and I am basically staying at Truro and today I am exploring Varian. Um, so I decided to take public transportation today for the very first time here in Cornwall. And I took a bus that does not go to Varian, but thanks to the power of Google Maps, I found a workaround. So I just have to walk 30 minutes from a stop named Wayside. So if you go to the bus station on stand E, uh, you get the bus number 52 St. Moors. And then you stop at Wayside. Even if the bus driver doesn't know exactly where it is, you can show him the map. Or alternatively, you can just keep, you know, your GPS on and you can follow along as you go on the bus so then you can press the button whenever you're supposed to leave. Varian is a small village with very cute houses. I've always wanted to visit, um, so I'm really excited that I'm going to do that visit today. So yeah, a little bit more walking there uh, up the hill this time, not down the hill. And I'll show you guys around. You call it cute, call it. Hello. Hello. Oh, hello, Collies. <laughs> hello, beautiful. Sweet. Nice white waist area. Bye bye. Hi. England, you're stunning. Varian is popular for its roundhouses, which were built this way as it was thought at the time that by having round-shaped houses at each entrance of the village, they would offer protection against evil since there were no corners for it to hide. Nowadays, you can actually stay at some of these roundhouses for one or more nights if you fancy the full experience of staying at a building that was once believed to be the source of protection for the entire village. There are actually five roundhouses and even though at first I was struggling to understand where exactly they were, I finally found all of them. You've got the two most popular on the south of the village, another hidden near Varian Church of England Primary School, and finally two more on the other end of the village, up north, located in Varian Green, about 10 minutes walk from the third roundhouse. there is extremely peaceful and very great, but I would agree that the first roundhouses in Varian are definitely much more appealing to the eyes. Another thing I loved about Varian was the fact that they have free public toilets and are trying to transform an old telephone box into a books and seed swapping place. Before I move on to the next destination, I would like to uh, mention a couple of other places. So the first one will be St. Moors. The first time I tried to pronounce it, I kind of said St. Maui's. So St. Moors is accessible from Falmouth. I did that the other day. I took a ferry there and unfortunately, 
uh, for loads of different reasons. I ended up not seeing a lot. The weather was bad, so they didn't have the last ferry. Uh, meaning I only had an hour and a half to visit everything and unfortunately I entered the restaurant uh, just past three and they weren't serving any food so I ended up wasting like an hour there uh, because then we were trying to see what I could do, what I couldn't do, etc. The restaurant looked really nice by the way. I think it would be nice to have had some food there but you know. And a big shout out goes to the lady who served me who was super 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 kind and a bit shy to tell me the sad news that they were not serving any food anymore. As frustrated as that was, the fact that there was someone serving that was super kind made it a lot easier to not be upset about it. <laughs> uh, still it's a really nice place, very pretty. The harbour is absolutely beautiful, uh, they have a castle that looks very nice. So I would say that is a very nice place for you to visit as well. Spend a couple of hours if you are in Falmouth you can easily take the ferry and then if you have a bicycle it's free of charge you can take it with you and on a bicycle you can easily visit two other destinations that I'm gonna try to squeeze in today. Those two locations are St. Just in Roseland, a bike ride of 17 minutes from St. Moors, Port Scatho, a further 25 minutes ride and if you would like to come back to St. Moors at the end it will be around 35 minutes ride if you don't take a ferry boat. As of today, I was meant actually to go along the uh, coastal path, but I have been doing loads of coastal paths and you'll know that if you have been following along this Cornwall series. And looking at the Google pictures, uh, I didn't find them as impressive as the other ones I have been doing. Uh, bear in mind that Roseland Peninsula is more green as opposed to the area where I did the coastal paths around St. Ives and St. Agnes. Those areas are more wrecked, so you have a lot more like rock formations. So that's, if you are into that kind of stuff, then you'll probably like that area more, but I can't talk exactly because I am not gonna do the coastal path um, in Roseland Peninsula in the end of the story. Uh, but in case you do want to do that, then I would like to mention a couple of points that I had on my list to see. Um, so I was going to see Jacka Point uh, in Narhead. And then if you do the coastal path, then you definitely want to stop at Pendower Beach. And that's gonna be exactly where I will be heading now. So I'm gonna walk there from Varian Green where I was. You will have about 40 minutes of walk. And then from there, I want to visit the two locations that I missed last time, which are, the first one has a really complicated name, Port Scatho. I have no idea how you would say that. To get to this location, I had to take the bus number 50 towards St. Moe's. This bus runs around every hour, so if you plan on commuting via public transportation, you will have to be really careful with time. For some reason, I feel like I didn't have any expectations about Roseland Peninsula. Probably due to the fact that it's not popular at all comparing to other places in Cornwall, so you don't hear about it nor see photos from it very frequently. And in the end, every single place I visited in the peninsula took me by surprise. Port Scatho, or whatever you call this place, as you never know if you're pronouncing properly when it comes to Cornish places, was just one of those locations I had no idea what to expect, yet, for the short amount of time I spent there, all I saw was beauty. Um, and then from there I'll take a bus towards St. Just's in Rosalind, I think that's how you say it. In the end, I had to rush so I could catch the bus number 50 again, but after waiting long enough at the bus stop and not seeing the bus at all, I gave up and decided to walk towards St. Just in Roseland, where I found probably the most beautiful church garden I have ever seen in my entire life. You will feel like you are in an amazing botanical garden, except it's free and part of a church actually, which is pretty difficult to believe. In an attempt to have a beautiful view towards the church, like I saw online, I started walking towards the left side of the church and ended up in a place I probably shouldn't be at. Why do I always do this? The 
this is disgusting, but what we do for a photo, then yeah. I can't believe I just did that. What the heck am I doing? Not quite the angle I wanted, which is bad. That means I have to go back and try to go to the other side. And this was not fun. I really don't like to be this close to water. Anyways, after realizing this was clearly not the spot I was looking for and having my heart pounding while using this questionable small boat to move me from land to the pier. Bye boat, bye bye. That was an adventure. And I'm sure I'm not supposed to be here, but... I made my way to the other side of the church where, lo and behold, I found the view I was looking for. In the end, thanks to all of the time I spent walking around looking for this exact spot, I missed the bus for just a few minutes. Luckily for me, a local stopped by and gave me a lift until, as close as they could, saved me another hour of wait. And this, my friends, is why I still have hope for humanity. <laughs> I've been helped over and over again on my trips and people like them are the reason I love this world so much. At the end of the day, I was back in Truro where I was based during my trip to Roseland Peninsula. But there are still two more places I would love to mention when it comes to visiting this area of Cornwall. Actually three, but this first one I don't recommend a visit anymore. Unfortunately, the building is collapsing and you can't visit much at the moment. There are signs at the entrance advising that the building might ruin at any point and not only that, the access here is extremely difficult, so I would not recommend a visit here even though, yeah, I think this could probably be a very nice place in the past, just not anymore. So let's head to the places I actually recommend a visit. Mephigisi and the Lost Gardens of Heligan. Well, Mephigisi was probably my favorite coastal town in Cornwall, sorry St. Ives and Penzance, Mephigisi definitely wins for me. The Lost Gardens of Heligan were the gardens I never thought I would find in England. Mephigisi gave me the Italian summer vibes while I walked along this hidden gem of a town and Heligan Gardens gave me the tropical vibes while I stared at the sleepy lady and walked through the road bridge. And because I could be bragging about these two places forever, I will make it easier for you by explaining each of them separately, starting with Mephigisi next week. If you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to turn on notifications so you get notified of when both of these videos are released. Thanks for watching all the way until the end and if you're planning on visiting Cornwall, make sure to check other videos on my Cornwall series. I'll leave them on the cards and on the description of this video. Thank you for bearing with me while I was planning my trip to Hungary. Hungary vlogs will come in three weeks, as soon as we finish our Cornwall series. Bye bye!